but there is still a great deal of work to do, and we will do that work. A member for Hamilton Centre. Today on the National Day of Mourning, we remember those we've lost and those who have suffered life-changing workplace injuries. Mr. Speaker, this Liberal government is planning to end the sickness benefit program on May 7th. Federal workers won't have any support if they're sick and need to stay home. While we fought to secure 10 paid sick days to protect federal workers, the Liberals are choosing to delay this important protection for Canadians. So, Mr. Speaker, when will this Liberal government fall through and finally deliver on the 10 paid sick days workers deserve. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, our government always puts workers first and our government absolutely believes in the importance of unions in defending workers and in ensuring a productive and effective economy. That is why our government, for the first time in Canadian history, will ensure that all Canadian workers have the right to 10 paid sick days. It's the right thing to do, and we're going to do it. The Honourable Member for Sturgeon River Parkland. Mr. Speaker, we have asked many times for this government to confirm if they will disclose the evidence that justified the invocation of the Emergencies Act. Every single time, they have refused. If the government has the evidence to support their extraordinary actions, they should be pleased to take the opportunity to table it in this House today. Canadians are increasingly wondering whether this Liberal government even had the evidence at all. Can the Minister of Public Safety confirm whether the evidence exists, yes or no? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the short answer is yes, the evidence exists. Um, where was my Honourable colleague last January and February when businesses were shut, when people were laid off? when our borders were closed, when outside this chamber, Mr. Speaker, Ottawans were held hostage in their own homes. We debated those facts in this House. I remember my honourable colleague and I having an exchange during the debate of the invocation of the Emergencies Act, and it was only after police told us that they needed this special power to ensure that they could restore public safety. We're going to cooperate with the inquiry so that there's transparency so that we can make sure that this never happens again. The honourable member for Sturgeon River Parkland. I guess I'll take that as a no, Mr. Speaker. Appointing a commissioner to lead the inquiry into the government's unprecedented use of the Emergencies Act must be a process that is completely transparent. Parliament was in no way consulted by this Liberal government on the appointment of Justice Rouleau. For an inquiry as important as this, Canadians deserve to know how and why the government determined that Justice Rouleau was the appropriate candidate. What was the process? What qualifications were required? How many candidates were considered? Will the government reveal this information, yes or no? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, my honourable colleague wants transparency. I would encourage him to bold, highlight and underline the word public in the expression public inquiry, Mr. Speaker. Um, Justice Rouleau has a plethora of experience in both trial law as well as appellate law. He's familiar, familiar with the principles of, 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 of ensuring that there is a balance between cabinet confidences and making sure that he has the information that he needs to review so that we can be sure we got it right with regards to the Emergencies Act, Mr. Speaker, so that we can be sure that there are lessons taken away from this awful episode. And it would be nice to see the Conservatives appreciate just how severe this event was. Thank you. Well, that'll be the deputy to Charlotte.